We have here a first generation S-Works Venge in a size 56, weighing at 16 pounds, 15 ounces, and in kilos at 7.66 kilos. So someone stop shaking the frame. And we have on here the Garmin mount, the pedals, and the cages. Stay tuned after the video here, your free body on these uh, old school Zip 404 Firecrest wheels right here. Thank you guys. Hey, how's it going everyone? GC Performance here, back with another video. And today I have you guys a very beautiful bike here, a very special bike to me. This is Specialized Own S-Works Venge, their first generation of the bike. Their aero machine, and this bike is done up to the T. We're gonna go into all the details, talk about all of the features of this bike, and uh, talk about why this is one of my favorite bikes here. This is actually the first ever S-Works bike that I ever owned by Specialized was the S-Works Venge. I had it in the Mark Cavendish Limited Edition, the matte black with the green S-Works logo in the front. Uh, but right here we have the rocket red S-Works Venge color frame set you bought up and this customer built it up beautiful. He has mechanical shifting on there. He has a Zip 404 Firecrest that pretty much dominated the market during that time period as well. He has on here a saddle that is no more longer made but was one of their best saddles ever made. The, the Specialized Roman Pro with the carbon rails with the white inserts in the middle, it looks beautiful. I mean, the bike is amazing. No drop seat stays, BB30 bearings, Specialized own S-Works proprietary cranks, absolute beautiful bike absolute beautiful bike but before we get into all the details i show you everything that pretty much shows off why this bike is a flat machine a rocket even the color is called a red rocket color uh i just want to say a couple things first off i was on the chris miller cycling podcast the other day amazing guys had an absolute blast while filming there the guys were legends i absolutely loved it they were in australia check out the podcast if you guys can uh, i just posted about it recently on my channel very fun time. We just basically talk, talked about bikes and uh, chalked it up. So it was an absolute pleasure to be on there. It was an honor to be on there as well as my first ever guest appearance on a show for someone who actually wanted me. So that was pretty cool. Second of all, I've been noticing that a lot of my subscribers have been saying that I've been posting YouTube videos, which I post often, but they're not getting notifications. I think there's this bug with YouTube. So go ahead and just check to see if you're subscribed. If you're not, go ahead and subscribe down below. Also like the video. And I also think there's another bug with YouTube where they're not paying me enough money. So if you guys can just go ahead and um, break out your wallets go ahead and send me over your credit card and social security i don't know where i was going i think i think youtube cut me off on that one anyways uh no i'm just kidding but yeah check to see if your notifications are turned on and the likes and stuff like that if you want to like the video it doesn't bother me but i'm just a nerd talking about bikes and this is one of my favorite bikes my all-time favorite bikes this is the first generation of the s-works venge in a rim brake model they did not make a disc brake model of this bike they had three iterations of the of the venge style bike it's this current model right in front of us this is the s-works venge then they brought in the second generation, which was called the S-Works Venge Vias, which had a lot of proprietary parts on there. They came in a rim brake and a disc brake model, and it was in the tour for a while. And then they have the current but discontinued model, which is the third generation of the S-Works Venge, which is only disc brakes. It has a lot of resemblance to the Tarmac SL7. That's where the Tarmac SL7 got its design from. And the Venge was their aero bike, their all-out aero weapon. Um, Peter Sagan dominated a lot of stages on this bike. This bike has been a, a flagship bike for them for a long time, and I absolutely love it. This is my first ever S-Works I've ever owned. No drop seat stays, a very, very vertically stiff bike. If you guys have ever got a chance to ride this bike or have the privilege to ride this bike, you guys will know this bike was extremely fast in the flats. It accelerated really quickly. You stepped on the pedals, it took off really easily. But if anyone ever rode this bike, especially because it's had a narrow tire clearance, so we are pretty much on like 700 by 26 c on here because of look how tight those tire clearances are on there we all noticed that this was a very very stiff ride vertically you would feel all the bumps on the road any kind even if it's a smooth road the bike would kind of just feel like it just beat you up a little bit uh and you can even see that where the seat post lines up right over the seat tube there wasn't that much offset on there so you felt everything but again if you're looking for every kind of speed that you wanted to if you can endure the pain as well and get used to the ride this bike will perform exactly how you want it to perform not only that, these Zip 404 Firecrest, I had these wheels myself with the black spokes with their own Zip Hub. This to me was one of their peak or, or the nicest hubs they had in there. Had that iconic Zip sound that was absolutely beautiful. Let me give you a sound test of it. Beautiful, it had their Zip golf ball technology design with the black logos. I think this was like one of the first years they had a black logo design. Carbon clinchers on there. I remember I got these wheels myself and they, they came out like cork brake pads. I had them on here. Absolute horrible for the rain. But uh, these wheels were bomb proof, bulletproof. This is when Zip had such a stronghold on the market. And you saw everyone who was riding top tier bikes or high end bikes were all riding Zip wheels. 
Uh, the 404s were an iconic wheel set at this time as well. And then we can see here, we have the appreciation for the mechanical group set. The Durace 11 speed, uh, I believe this was the 9,000 at the time. And you can see that cassette in the back. Yes, here it is Florida. That is a 1123 cassette. That is a close to a straight block where the 10 speed was 1121. This is a 1123 cassette. I mean, literally, you want to talk about no hills here. It's 1123 Dur uh, Altegra cassette with a black KMC chain. And then we have on there an S Works chain ring. That is a 5339. That was a standard. And then this was their S Works carbon crank. Now, I like this crank. I absolutely like this crank a lot. It's a full carbon fiber crank arm. It was compatible with their own OSBB BB30 system. It is 11R carbon. And then they even included in the Spider a ceramic speed, a ceramic speed uh, badged carbon fiber Spider on there. But they had their own S Works chain rings, they had their own S Works bolts, their, their own S Works carbon fiber Spider, their own S Works crank arms. I remember for the longest time I was trying to get these crank arms on my bike just because of the fact that they were different. And I really did like it. Now you're not seeing specialized goals as above and beyond for this type of stuff. Uh, I think they got out of the crank arm market and out of their bottom bracket market because of just longevity and people still owning this stuff. Uh, things over time start to fail and especially if you don't have stock of it, it becomes a problem, especially when you offer lifetime warranties. And the BB30. Uh, I remember when these BB30 crank arms came out of here or this BB30 platform out here. Uh, this one has the updated cups in here. But before when this Venge first came out, it was a plastic cup and it was just basically bone dry in there. The first solution was to add grease to it. The grease did nothing. Then they started adding epoxy to it. They would, epoxy would hold for a little bit, but then it would start to ovalize and the plastic cup would come out with the bearing. So then they got these metal cups that are a little bit bigger than what the frame was. You push them in, you press them in with some grit on there and they would hold snug. You put the bearings in, no more issues really. I mean, honestly, the, the bearings, after you did this kind of fix to the bike, it held up really, really nice. So very cool there. Uh, yes, yeah, so for the S Works Venge, this was at the time period that they only had the 11R carbon. So we can see here, this was before 12R carbon was made. The only time we even ever heard of 12R carbon was when they had this bike, the Venge, offered in a limited edition run for the McLaren version, which was considered their 12R carbon. That bike retailed for $18,000. It was a partnership with McLaren and it was a bike that you got two wheel sets for. So very cool. Uh, now, I'm gonna just kind of go through this whole bike and just kind of give you guys a rundown of the setup because there's a lot of nostalgic on this bike. And if you guys are a bike nerd like me, you guys will appreciate it. So starting off with the handlebars on here, this is the S-Works Aerofly 1 handlebar. This is a bar that pretty much set off the Aero Wave with this Venge here. Um, they don't make this bar anymore, but it said S-Works right across the top here. Very bold, so if you did the has tape, it looks really clean. They made it in a gloss version. I absolutely love the look of it. Uh, but then people start to realize that with a gloss bar, when you're sweating, it is slippery, but just the look of it is very nice. You have on here their S-Works SL stem with titanium bolts. Very, very nice. For the shifters on here, with the, I don't know what it was, but with these gray shifter heads on here, for the, the I think believe this is the Durace 9000. This had one of the most comfiest and grippiest feeling that I remember for a mechanical shifter. Buttery smooth still, this guy, when I tell you this guy keeps his bike in pristine condition, I think this is a 2016, 2017, whatever bike this is. This bike is pristine. When I tell you this cables, I mean, the cable shift down here is phenomenal. I mean, he I don't know how he keeps it so pristine here in South Florida. He rides a ton. He also has a bunch of other bikes as well. So maybe he just kind of puts his bike up for a trophy bike. We have on here some disc, or I'm sorry, some, I'm so used to saying disc brake. Some road brake calipers right here with the Durace 9000s. We have the carbon fiber brake pads on here. I haven't played with these in forever, man. I have this little adjustment to open up for tire clearance to go ahead and change your flat. Um, very cool. It's like it's like I'm almost playing with like history right here. Oh, you got the little disc brakes and you got your little thingy back in the day here. And this is called a cable. This is what they used to stop. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, you have the Zip 404 wheels, the Firecrest. These were the pinnacle at the time. They did not make a 454 at the time. This was the best wheel that Zip sold for this kind of depth. Um, beautiful black spokes, beautiful black hub by their own. Very lightweight skewers. One of the most dominant wheels out there. For tires on here, he has the S-Work Turbo tires. And again, this is back in the day when they had the world champion title on there. They slapped the world champion title on the tires. Great tires right here. S-Works 700 by 26 c tires and this was about the biggest clearance you can get on here just to give you guys an example this was before tire clearance was even a thing but look how much look how tucked that is up there that is very very wide you wouldn't be able to throw a 28 on this bike 
so that was the this was the time where i think they even set these bikes with a 24 front 26 rear or maybe still riding 23s on here this was a time where they were still running that narrow tire we have the internal cable routing ports right here we have the internal cable routing port running for this rear brake all the way out to the front right here a lot of corrosion will get right here because of the salty nut sack sweat that just drip on top of here and i usually just touch my bare hands and I go ahead and pick my nose every once in a while i didn't mind the salt and corrosion kind of tasted good that's kind of gross and I'm, I'm just kidding about that we do have this little gooseneck right here this was the first time we saw the venge have this little iteration and the first time i got to see a bike with a little cutout and i was like oh it's so cool such cool detail it was just like you know again these things are just nostalgic to me from working at a store uh for the crank like i mentioned before it is their own s-works chainring 5339 it's a 130 bcd ceramic speed uh carbon fiber spider with a s-works uh carbon fiber crank arm it is a 11r carbon and then these pedals right here they don't make these pedals either anymore these are the look keel blade but the arrow edition these are a full arrow shell on the bottom these are the first generation of the keel blades where literally it was just this keel this was just the blade of carbon that clipped to and out super lightweight these were the titanium uh these were the titanium axes as well these pedals were, i think were like a good solid 500 bucks beautiful pedals though these things are just you don't see bike parts like these made anymore really it feels like everything's just mass produced just clunk it out this stuff was like jewelry back in the day jewelry jewelry gorgeous absolutely love it you still to get the s-works chainring bolts you have an s-works cage on here you can see the thinness of the down tube but you can see the nice support system of that bb a lot of extra carbon this was again i think this frame released in 2013 so that shows you the kind of innovation they had back then we have the dual seat post clamp right here for this seat post. This is a proprietary s Revenge seat post or a proprietary seat post right here. You have the dual clamp that you see them glide on the LA Sprint as well. Um, I did see some idiots go ahead and tighten these things down once in a while and they crack them. I don't know who taught you to tighten down one side completely and tighten down the other side completely. That's not me, that's not you. That's just something you were taught back at home. You need to talk to your parents about that. Um, again, we can see here the tightness of the clearance for the tires here. And this is where you get a lot of the rub was right there you get a lot of tire clearance rub right there again a 26 is about the biggest you can get in here you can't find these tires no more with the world champion logo on there some of the coolest tires they had again a 1123 cassette with a black kmc chain and then we have the durace rear derailleur with a short cage on there phenomenal i mean this bike is the epitome of a time seat and then the seat i don't know why i get so geeked out over a seat this was one of my favorite seats. This was one of my brother's favorite seats. They took the Roman and I just took it into a Roman Evo, uh, which they made a little bit more narrow. This was one of the most comfortable seats I ever tried in my life. First time I tried it was at a specialized fit class. They threw on my bike as a test saddle. One of the widest cutouts they offered at first with the, with the process in there. They had the curvature or the contour to the saddle to kind of give you a nice fit on there. It kind of felt like your, your, your sit bones are kind of like nice and plump and sucked in there. It, it, you have the support of the nose in the front. This thing just cradles you so, so well. Uh, you have the old school, like the nice design of the red lines and the fat carbon on there. The white saddle for a little touch on it. It was really cool. That was back in the day when Specialized used to make like the reddest faster saddles and stuff like that. And I had a Scion saddle of this, like a complete blue Scion. Very, very cool stuff. But anyways, guys, hopefully you guys have that fun time going down memory lane. Uh, again, this is a really badass bike. And as you guys saw the weight for a rim brake bike for S-Works top tier, that is with pedals, cage, and Garmin mount on there, 7.62. And these wheels were not the lightest at the time. And this is a full aero bike back in the day. That's gonna do it for the video, guys. Thank you guys again so much for watching and check out the free buy Santas at the end. All right, guys, here comes the free buy Santas and the Zip 404 classic wheels right here. We got here, we go right here. We got one right here. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Perfectly balanced classic zip hub that we love to hear nostalgic i can fall asleep to that you guys can fall asleep to it too bye